aren't giving us a reading on that asteroid's attraction. It has a magnetic field that's impossible to assess right now. I still get a zero reading on our ship's computer. But it's obvious that there's something out there. Something very powerful. Too powerful. I don't like it. Shall I call the base, Captain? Mm hmm Lieutenant Vazilov from Spaceship Magellan to Base Altair. Answer me. Damn it, why don't they come in? just received a signal on the S2 panel, which covers the area of K5. Thanks, Hawkins. Colonel Dawson, get the computer data on that area. Give it to me on audio readout. Yes, Commander. Captain Connolly, Commander speaking. Connolly speaking. We can't get a readout on our computer. We are near asteroid XQ-117. A magnetic force of four is drawing us toward an unknown planet. You're being drawn to a strange planet? Can't you resist it? I can change course, Commander, but... 
But this asteroid's never given off a strong field before. It's my intention to go out there and look around. Who knows what we might discover out there? It could be what we're looking for is here. He's putting them all in danger. And that wasn't a request for authorization. Anyway, information on that asteroid might be quite valuable. Don't you agree, Helen, that we should proceed? Don't you remember last year when we landed on Sirius? No information had been available previously. But what we learned was valuable. Connolly was talking about an exceptional magnetic field out there in space, wasn't he, Helen? And permit me to say, magnetic fields are my daily bread. Keep calm. We'll know more about it in a little while. Want to go down in history as a hero, eh? The satellite's malfunctioning. It's not transmitting any new information, Commander. It has failed to for several hours. of that magnetic field. However, that accounts for why we haven't received any communications from Sector K-5. We've been sighting UFOs for a century. Visionaries, madmen, people out for publicity. You are forgetting that strange objects have been sighted lately and verified. Sighted almost everywhere. And those reporting them are not just visionaries, nor are they crazy. They've been astronomers, scientists, even radar has been picking up the objects. But now you admit you have no explanation. So what you've accomplished is the destruction of our credibility. There's no point in discussing it further. Connolly will give us more positive data soon. By the way, where's Mike Layton? The security service is his responsibility. Where's Mike? Search for Diane Green and you'll find Mike. I'll do just that. Martin, look for Layton in all the places where he usually hangs out. Okay, I'll jump right on it, sir. Hey! <laughs> Quick, Diane! Get the net! Uh, it's a biggie! Uh Ah, you're gonna have a great supper tonight. Mm -hmm. All cooked on embers. What a beautiful spot this is. We've collected a, a natural paradise on this tired old planet Earth. It's an uncontaminated oasis. <laughs> Well, after all, isn't 
fishing a very interesting distraction. Commander, Leighton can't be found. They're searching, even outside the area. Okay, Vasilov, let's go outside. Put off all the lights. Sir, Leighton just can't be located. He might be up in the wildlife reservation, so I'm sending some men up there. When Mike is located, I want him brought back here to the base. Yes, sir. By the time you light the fire that way, Mike, we'll freeze or starve to death. There are advantages to modern times. Even in lighting a fire. Aren't you cold? There's room for two here. You're right. Whew. It's cold for this time of year. I'll just get under there. Till the fish is cooked, huh? Mm. Mm. Right, and why did you take a lighter into the reserve? You know bringing mechanical devices in here is forbidden. From phones to lighters. That's why I come here. If they want to find me, they'll have to trip over me. Listen, Mike. I think they hear some noises. Maybe a cougar. No, the only animals here have become friends of men. We don't hurt them, and they don't hurt us. That sounds like hooves. Horses' hooves. The only one with horses here is the special branch of ecology place. Go and hide behind that tree. Hurry. But why? Don't ask questions. Hurry up. <laughs> if it is the police, they must be looking for me. And I want to enjoy my vacation until the end. But it could be on account of the space defense system you're working on. No, it's all done. It only needs to be checked out, and they can do that without me. We've done it, Diane. We've fooled them. Captain Layton, I presume. Television Monitor 4. Taking on a big responsibility. If you're scared, I'll take Svensson instead. No, sir, it's my Let's turn. out there that the images we're transmitting aren't clear enough. I'm getting a strong indication of a magnetic field in this area. It seems to be coming from over there. Come on.
passageway seems to lead deeper underground. If we get lost in here, we'll never find our way out. Wesley, sharpen the focus. The image is getting too dim. We can do nothing about it. The signal's weak. It must be because of the magnetic field. I'm on maximum power now. If they go deeper, we might lose them. computer for the necessary data for return to Earth. Professor Burton, that it is human remains to be seen. Alert! Alert! Two UFOs! Closing fast! spaceships have sprung from nowhere. Only a moment ago, they weren't there, and now they're at 10,000 per sex. What can we do? Continue course. Try to draw them toward the missile defense system of perimeter K-6. And you needn't worry. We needn't worry. He's not out here. Well, if we draw them into K-6, our defense satellites will destroy them. You said it. We've got to try it. the engines. Mike, have you heard about Connolly? Yes, Martin told me everything. Well, you're here. Finally. Hello, Commander. May I ask just where you were hiding? Is that important, sir? Mike, look. The Magellan's in trouble. It's not moving. That's the end. That was a thermic ray. They didn't have a chance. The air itself combusts and burns. We've had an answer to our research. But what a price. The aliens have weapons that have never been seen on our Earth. Our planet is in jeopardy. And we mustn't exclude the possibility that other alien ships have already gotten through. Visionaries, madmen, journalists out for a big scoop. Instead, it was true. Okay, Mike. Now you've got to destroy those aliens. Unfortunately, my defense system hasn't been tested yet. I've got to have time to make sure it works perfectly, sir. The Earth could be destroyed while we waited for you to put that new defense system through the proper tests. Listen, Mike. Now's the time to put it to the test and let's hope it works. Green alert. 
What are you trying to do? Ready with the Earth to Air Cosmos missiles. Strange, the spaceships seem headed into the same sector. Sir, we might try to contact the aliens instead of destroying them. Sectors K-5 and K-6. Fire! K-5 failed! The second ship is headed toward Earth. Signal red. Dawson! Warn the ground bases to proceed with the search for the spaceship. Sector K-5 lost contact. Yes, sir. How is it possible that the spaceship escaped the missiles? Technical error? Or human error, because the other ship was destroyed. And now we must face the journalists. Who feels up to it? What a poor example of a defense system. It's a disgrace. But a good example of the waste of taxpayers' money. Well, we've got our headline for tomorrow morning. Alien ship penetrates our defense. Earth invaded by monsters with insect eyes. Do the monsters possess the ultimate weapon? Now we must surrender our liberty to worlds from another planet. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, your attention, please. I'm sorry you'll have to keep this top secret. Nobody is allowed to talk about this for at least two hours. Oh, sure. Okay, okay. Freedom of the press, information, the fourth power. I know all about that and I agree with you. But surely, you can keep your mouth shut for two hours. Just two hours, please. I couldn't keep them any longer. By now, the security agents have been able to speak to the heads of the information services. Senator Warren has personally convinced the Washington Post editor to cooperate. A bright object appeared here near Azacavil, a village in the Yucatan, and stopped for a few minutes several hundred meters from the ground. Then it mysteriously disappeared. A small forest under the object has been carbonized totally. We could not determine how many lives were lost and homes destroyed, as there was nothing whatever left in the area. Army units are moving in. We could not transmit sooner due to a power failure. Even our backup systems were knocked out so that our electronic devices were dead. Colonel, leave immediately. You must try to bring the situation under control. Remember that the Army doesn't really know what's happened. I'd like to take Dr. Parker and Professor Burton along on the assignment, if you'll agree. I suspect that in a situation like this, scientists can do a lot more to help than the Army can. No, they're too valuable to me. I need my experts right here. I insist. Commander, Dawson's right. What are you doing here? Get out of my way. Thanks, Commander. Oh, there you are, Mike Clayton. Hello, Mike. Hello, Charles. Herman. Diane, I want you to meet Charles Sotis and Herman Wasson. Have we already met somewhere? At the party last New Year's, as I recall. Ah, yes, I remember that Dr. Green was the most charming scientist there. I really am sorry to interrupt all this sweet talk, but we're here to work. Uh, Mike, your jealousy spoils everything. By the way, we've begun to check the defense system. In a few days' time, you'll know everything about the failure of the defense system. There's work for you, too, Diane. I'm making contact with the five members of the K-5 sector, and I want you to be the one to put them through a strict psychophysical examination. Commander, we're about to enter the area. We lost some time back at those damn roadblocks. Commander, we're continuing to proceed, but we're behind schedule. We're approaching roadblock number one now. It's about a mile farther down the road. Another two miles and we'll be on the exact spot where that bright object was seen. We'll report back to you as soon as we have any information. The roadblock is... Transmitter's got no power. It's strange. It's as if the power's blocked. It's a battery. The whole thing's dead. I don't get it. 
The battery recently was on full charge, and I didn't transmit to headquarters in more than a minute. What do you think's causing it, Colonel? What the hell happened? I don't understand, Commander. We've lost contact with their car. The transmitter must have broken down. Call roadblock number one at once. Okay. Not yet, Commander. Control block number two reported that the car passed through 15 minutes ago, but it hasn't arrived here yet. Martinez, don't you know that's impossible? It could be impossible, Commander, but it is true. perfectly. Nothing seems to be wrong with it. And I've been testing the moon base defense. Everything seems to work perfectly there, too. But we'll be there in a few hours to report personally. Looks good. Now half the work has been done. contact. To be more accurate, it has established itself. That's only speculation. It is our theory that they passed through a magnetized field. Can you tell us exactly what happened? A small car accident, Commander, that's all. I've been trying to explain this to roadblock number one, sir. Tell them to hurry up. Only a formality. But it was necessary. Every day. And I'm serious. I'm sure that gives permission for a limited time. For how long would you want me? Three years? Five? Longer. Much longer. I want to have children. Lots of children. Oh, Mike, I know you. You'll end up by destroying everything. You're like me. You love your freedom too much.
What's happening? The birds seem to sense danger. Why aren't the monitors picking up any images? What's going on? The computer's on? gone mad, and all the instruments seem crazy. Commander, all our warning devices have failed. Captain, the circuits are overloaded. We could have a massive power failure. It seems as if we're caught in the middle of an overwhelming magnetic field. Shut down all excess power and try to get some readings. Prepare to start up the auxiliaries. Instruments are working. It's over. Brady, we must try to find out what the hell is happening. Whatever happened is over, I think. Look, Mike. Look who's coming. At last, Mike. I couldn't wait to speak with you. Everything's all right, isn't it? No. A satellite wasn't working. That's why the alien spaceship has come through. What? What are you saying? Why are you so surprised, Mike? But look... Wait a minute. What have you done since you arrived at a spaceport? I took a car and came here. Naturally. I have to know everything. You surely must have had a coffee or smoked a cigarette or had a drink, or had something. <laughs> Mike, you sound suspicious. So accusing. Did you do anything at all since landing? Of course I did. But what is this, the third degree? I've got to know what you did since you came. There's something dangerous happening, and I've got to find out what. I want to know exactly what you've done since you landed. Well, I did have a coffee. I phoned home to tell my wife that I was home. Then I took a car and came here. Are you positive, Charles, that you're not forgetting something? Some tiny little detail? I don't think so. But I don't understand. Why are you questioning me so closely? What are you getting at, Mike? Mike's a suspicious man. And right now, he suspects us, Charles. <laughs> What made you suspect that we're not who we pretended to be? Where was I wrong? I knew everything the real Sotis knew. You must have said something related to the last hours before he died. What should we do with them? Thinking of substituting them with our own kind. By doing that, we could penetrate their highest levels of command, but we would have to take them to our secret base to substitute them. There isn't enough time for that. And it would be too risky, so we'll have to shoot them. Stop. Release her. Release the woman. Sotis, quick, let's get out of here. Thanks, friends. Thanks for saving us. That's why I'm here. Fascinating. If I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't have believed it. It looks like a toy. Instead. Instead, one of the most powerful weapons in the universe is in this ball. I believe this ball might be the ultimate weapon. It's a laser with a strength that's incredible. Why did Sotus and Wasson try to kill us? Probably Sotus and Wesson, or the beings that were impersonators, weren't planning to make their move yet. I suspect that your questioning forced them to compromise. 
From Ganymede, we have been watching the preparations for the invasion of Earth by the Gonian army. My son Azar said that we could save you by materializing here. Azar? A boy, 12 or 13 years mm. old? My son is a genius, and in time he may prove more important than I in helping Earth. And of what interest is the Earth to you? Ganymede. You assert that you come from Ganymede. And you only did it to save us from an invasion by these beings? It's true, Diane. Isn't that right? My motives are not as altruistic as all that. We on Ganymede are in danger as well as the Earth. So is the whole universe. Earth is the first target. You're in danger of becoming the launching site. And from here, the Gonians will attack us. How will they be able to adapt themselves to our atmosphere? Can they take over our bodies? It will take too long to explain to you. For now, accept the concept that the Gonians can make doubles of anyone on Earth. The Gonians have a computer for a brain. The computer has gathered the sum of all the minds which lived on Gona during the last 300 years. The knowledge that the Gonian computer holds is so vast and complete that it cannot be matched by even the most brilliant brain of any creature in the universe. Unfortunately, this computer already has been transferred to Earth. It is here now. So that means that when the entire Gonian fleet of invaders lands on Earth, you will not have a strong enough defense to destroy them. We'll be an inferior race. Well, it's true scientifically. But then it's also true that we and the Gonians are also much older than you. Moreover, the Gonians wouldn't have been interested in a sophisticated and well-advanced planet. To them, the Earth is a choice morsel. So it is in our best interest to try to save you. Sooner or later, you'll be at war with Gona. And it would suit you better if it took place here. Who knows how many Gonians already have taken Earthmen's bodies? Not many, Diane. Not many of their ships have reached the Earth yet. There's still little time until their entire invading fleet reaches the Earth. However, they've already been able to establish their headquarters here. And their first ship carried the great computer, and it was put into a new city underground, and that's the place where their headquarters is located. We must make sure that our thought processes are working properly. Certainly. And first of all, we must find out if any Gonians are among the personnel at the base. And probably you can ascertain that if you conduct a simple encephalograph test among the personnel. That's it. The situation in Azekabil is under control now, sir. In a matter of days, a complete area will have been searched and the foreigners located. Are you having difficulties with the press? None at all. I just asked them to put a lid on the story until we've been able to locate the aliens, and they agreed. It's fortunate that they were so cooperative. So far, these encephalograph tests have turned up nothing unusual. Do you know that I had a moment of fear when Diane subjected me to the examination? We're not finished yet. There are still the men from K-5 sector. Okay. You can get up now. Beckim, Borg, Borg. You must follow orders without question. Only in this way can the entire universe ultimately be dominated by us. Your first mission is to destroy the altar base of Earth. Albert Thompson, enter for examination. There's no reading from the brain scanner. It's one of the aliens. Get somebody in there to help. We lost contact to that area, Commander. Contact negative. Help! We've been fools. We took no precautions. She'll be a valuable hostage, but we must get her out of here. Let's go.
they're stuck inside there. Or are we the ones stuck out here? Block off sectors K1 and 2. Supreme Entity, our mission has been completed. Do not waste time in boasting. I know everything. I can see you. Now you must completely destroy the base. And us? Your personal fates are unimportant. When your bodies are destroyed along with Base Altair, you will continue to live within me for all eternity. A nuclear reactor that furnishes energy to the whole base is enough to blow it up. And the computer that can self-destruct is situated right next to it. There isn't time for everybody to get away. Only 30 seconds. than they are. You'll be able to exert your great power. Azar made it. Think about my mission, Commander. You've got a chance against the Gonians. I'm sure Mike can do it. Yes? The Earthmen are proving themselves to be stronger and more dangerous than our original assessment. Obviously, we have underestimated their capabilities. I must study and reevaluate them before colonizing their planet. General Kral informed me that the invasion fleet will be landing in three days' time. That is correct. In exactly three days from this moment, General Kral's fleet of space invader ships will be gathered just outside the Earth's defense perimeter. By then, we will be completely ready for a powerful and quick thrust through their defense system. You shall open the gate. The conquest of Earth is a vital step toward our conquest of this entire galaxy, and then the conquest of the entire universe. With confidence in our supreme power, we shall be victorious. the improvements you introduced might solve our problem. However, I don't have much confidence in them. Get rid of your doubts, Frank. There won't be any more problems. Earth's defense will be impenetrable. Okay, 
This is the last check. The space shield works perfectly. I see something, some kind of satellite, it looks like. It's too far away to make out what it is, but it seems to be a spaceship. A spaceship in that sector? It's certainly not terrestrial. Mike has no time to get away. It's not going at a great speed. It's in orbit out there, I think. Our courses should cross in about three or four minutes. Commander, it's a spaceship, Magellan. Leave it to us, Mike. Bimble is trying to contact the Magellan. Contact made with the commander. We can't get any signal at all from the Magellan. It's as if everyone on board is dead. Keep away from the Magellan. The aliens may have taken it over. Commander, I'm going to board the Magellan. We've got to find out what's happened to it. Mike, don't try it. It's too dangerous. On our way over there now, Commander. Why not break out some champagne? We should celebrate Mike's successful retrieval of the Magellan. Spaceship 72 of Gona's invasion fleet on its way toward the conquest of the planet Earth. <coughs> you are wasting your strength, Earthman. You are prisoners and for you there can be no escape. Where are you taking us? To our celestial base. 
Our supreme entity ordered us to take you prisoners. Each of you will be subjected to our usual conditioning. Who is this supreme entity? We will reach our destination shortly. Then you will see for yourself the powerful brain which holds the sum of all Gonian intelligence. Gonians are nothing without the supercomputer. But unlike you and me, our supreme entity is indestructible. And what do you look like? A voice without a body. Is that why you need us? We Gonians have bodies, but our bodies are decaying. That is the reason for our invasion and conquest of Earth. We need your bodies. At one time, long ago, we were a successful, a contented, a happy race of beings, like you. We had machines to do all of our work for us, but our technology became our ruin. There had been many warnings, but we took no notice of them. Up to the time when the air became unbreathable, all of our waters became hopelessly polluted. Our vegetation became rotted and poisonous. Our very earth rebelled, and on our bodies appeared the first purulent source. Gona had become a dead planet. Do you still want to see me? Do you truly desire to expose yourself to the sight of me? Then look at me! children. Now it's too late.
You can go on. Hey, you, signal the OK. The time is 3.30 p.m. The matter with which this man's body is constituted is from a different genetical matrix. Make the necessary adjustments to accommodate. Keep me informed at every step taken. The boy is next. Got to get out of here, Rick. As quickly as possible. Now this is a race against time. Don't worry, Mike. As soon as an opportunity comes, Azar and I won't miss it. Azar is really a robot. He's not a human being. In fact, Azar is my masterpiece. Instead of a brain, I gave him a computer, and instead of a heart and other organs, his body contains a network of integrated circuits. The boy's flesh and skin are synthetic, yet even to the touch. It's similar in every way to a human. But he is so human. He suffers grief. If to be human means being clever, Azar can be considered more human than you. It is with Azar that I created an intelligence that's nearly perfect. He's memorized all the knowledge of Ganymede. And suffering for him is indispensable. It serves as an alarm bell and alerts his body to maximum capacity to face any emergency. And in this way, Azar is human. I instilled in him the ability to feel the same way that you've been conditioned by your education. I've always considered Azar as a human. And more. He's mine, I love him like a son. But you created a boy. You must have a reason for it, for a child. Why a boy? I might tell you I wanted him to be accepted as a human. But I guess I would be lying. The truth is, there are no children on my planet. On Ganymede, we progress too far in the science of evolution. In some ways, farther than the Gonians. We've been able to discover the secret of immortality to a degree. <laughs> We're able to live for centuries without our bodies aging. But there's always a price to pay. None of us grows old individually. As a race, we've aged. We can't reproduce anymore. No more children. Ganymedians are all perfect yet. Maybe not. My lovely planet has not heard any babies cry in more than a century. We are all old people there. 
<laughs> if I told you how old we are, you'd be astounded. So that's why you created Azar. Azar is the boy I would like to have had, yet couldn't. Taking her. You've got the ability to move through space. Why don't you use it? I have the ability, but it doesn't work in here. Probably because of the negative energy of their computer. And out in space, none of us would be able to breathe. Right, Azar? As a robot, he doesn't breathe. We'll have to find a way out of here by ourselves, Mike. It'll be up to us to stop those three doubles from destroying your base reactor. Azar can protect Diane. We will put the woman through the blood exchange analyzer. Bring her to synthetic fluid laboratory Z12. I'll do it at once. Everything's proceeding as planned. It's now 5.20 p.m. Yes, but it's a very long trip. We had no choice. We have to signal our arrival at every one of the roadblocks. Every minute that passes brings them closer to Altair base. They'll complete their mission successfully, and I'll fail mine. get out of here. You've got to contact Azar. Only he can help us. Something seems to have happened to Azar. our supercomputer. Come on, we don't have time for any discussions. <coughs> Look, they've even built an underground city, and in such a short time. The power they must possess. We're losing time. <gasps> You're all right, thank God. Oh, it was horrible, hey, Mike. Somewhere around here they got a double of me. Do not let them escape. Even if you have to destroy them, they must be stopped. Alert, alert, stop them. This way. Hurry. 
Mike. Frank. Careful. You wouldn't kill your friend Frank Bimble, would you, Mike? Think of all the things we've been through together. Do you remember the time I saved your life when our ship broke down near that satellite? You wouldn't kill me, your friend Frank. Never mind the Earthmen. Save yourselves. I can't help you anymore. Let me put him down. Hazar. It's serious. Their computer is dying. And I also shall die. Er, I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to die. You made me feel like a real boy like all the others. I had everything, except the most important. A mother. Promise me one thing, Irk. When you return to... to Ganymede, I would like you to build another Azar just like me. Will you? Will you do it? Another Azar. Another Azar. One just like... just like... like... Papa. <laughs> You don't need me any longer, Mike. And I have a mission to complete. We'll follow you in the spaceship. Only you can stop them, Mike. Get back to Earth or those three doubles will destroy your Altair base. Quick, get on your ship! you understand? Mathematical language is universal language. Did you see somebody? Yes, I did. A Ganymedian. That's the force that stopped our engine. Take care of it, then. Come on, let's go back to roadblock number three. We'll cut through the woods.
have new orders to search... Lieutenant, the... we had an accident, so we'll have to borrow one of your cars. It's vital we reach the base. I understand, sir. Bring that car over here. Hurry up. Touchdown. All systems functioning perfectly. Maybe we'll be able to give Urk a hand. You will now that I'm here, Mike. That's a double. Don't believe her, Mike. She's the double. You thought you had got rid of me, didn't you? But Earthmen have hard skins. I knew you would have guided him here. You're the alien. And you can't prove differently. What? You want to convince Mike that I'm the alien? But you won't make it. At Altair Base, it will be easy to find out the truth. <laughs> That's your problem. Azar died in my arms. He would have recognized me. Azar was dying. His circuits were damaged. And anyway, I won't let you get as far as Altair Base. Get over there. And you, join her. Stay back. It's quite a problem. Mike, love. Mike, darling. Remember when we were at the reservation? I was there with you. There's one way to find out which is the real Diane. Ten minutes to touch down. I require your confirmation. I have ten minutes to eliminate one of you. <laughs> Take me to the commander. Go on in. Come this way. What did I tell you in prison before the aliens came to take you away? That we had to free ourselves quickly if we wanted to stop Dawson, Parker, and Burton's doubles. That's true, Mike. But that chamber was being watched. They were studying us as closely as they could. And then... And then? Maybe every word we said was recorded. That's possible. I'll turn around and face the wall until I decide what to do. Five minutes to touch down. Without your confirmation to proceed, I shall assume landing responsibility. What are you doing in here? You're not allowed inside the nuclear center. Idiot! There was no need. We should have taken them by surprise. Instead, now they'll sound the alarm. things are so stupid you could never outwit us and so Diane you've destroyed the supreme entity but you haven't won yet why didn't you kill us at once haven't you understood yet I need him alive if Dawson and the others should fail I'll be the one to reopen the way to the fleet then we'll be able to conquer your earth What a pity it wasn't loaded. <gasps> what?
What's wrong? Two aliens in there. Touchdown. We are proceeding under automatic control. Come out. Or I'll be forced to activate the decompression portal. You won't get me alive. My compatriots shall avenge me. My life is of no importance. Your planet shall belong to Gona. We're going to be too late. If she hadn't lost her nerve, you could have eliminated me. Not really. You were Cinderella. What does that mean? All of our communications with our defense system have been interrupted, Commander. Okay, command orders received. Beginning touchdown maneuvers. If Earth doesn't stop them, how long will it take to be invaded by Gona's fleet? From 20 minutes to a half an hour. I hope his mission is successful. Base Alter, come in, please. Base Alter, come in. Base Alter, can you hear me? Come in. This is the Alter base. Commander, it's me, Mike Layden. We're landing. It's about time. All hell's broken loose down here. Our communication system is still out, Commander. He's receiving image, but not sound. Commander, someone has penetrated the nuclear center and is now threatening to destroy the entire Altair base. It's 10.30 p.m. Gona's fleet entered the Earth's defense system half an hour ago. That means the Gonians are here in the center. Freeze! Freeze! Come closer and it'll blow off. A pity, but there isn't room on this planet for both our races. Maybe, if things had been different, we could have made you our slaves. Only a few more minutes until the Gonian spaceships appear. In a few minutes, it's going to be too late. When are the aliens going to arrive? If it is the Gonian fleet, it left at the same moment that Helen, or the being that took possession of Parker's body, pulled down the lever. In ten minutes' time, we'll see the first airship. You want to see their arrival, don't you? You come from Ganymede, right? But we have won. We had to win if we didn't want to disappear. We can't just stand here and let this go on. There's not much we're able to do about it. Where are they? How long will it take them to appear? I have every right to see them arrive. I open the base. 
I know. It was me who said Gona. You indeed won. You're able to relax now. Done it. It doesn't matter. If, if I die, if I die now, ah, ah, there are the Gonians. Ah. Oh no. Come on, Irk. give up yet. We must warn Washington, Moscow, Peking, and London. You see, Commander, for the last few months, I've been secretly developing an inner perimeter defense system to be used only should the outer perimeter defense fail. But my system has never been tested. If it fails, we're lost. We'll soon know, because I shall put it to the ultimate test in less than a minute. I must wait until the Gonians are within range. My timing must be perfect. defense system is great, Mike. Congratulations. The Gonians never suspected that you had built an inner defense, and I confess, neither did we on Ganymede. I'd like to say that when some other planet threatens our universe, your defense is going to be the model for everyone. How can we express our gratitude for all the help you gave us? You were magnificent. Thanks. <laughs> How did it happen? How did we get here before the Gonians landed? Now I understand. The time zone. 10 p.m. in Azekaville is 11 p.m. here. Get me Washington. Do you still want children? Or have you changed your mind? 
You'll have to consult my lawyer. I made that promise because I felt we were in danger. Burke's gone, but he left us a gift. He'll come back. Now we're not alone in space anymore. We have friends in the universe. Friends? You didn't recognize me? I love you. Sull'astronave. We are not 